What's up guys? Welcome to the final YouTube review of Hard Knocks episode 5. It is a wee bit late. I usually put it out on Wednesdays. I did not have time yesterday. We have been dealing with some technical difficulties. So I decided to record it today and put it out today. So it is Thursday, September 10th. It is kickoff day. Therefore, there is no more hard knocks to do. So when one door closes, the other opens. So no more hard knocks, but we do have a football season now. And I'm so excited. We are going to get into episode five of Hard Knocks. Before we get started, don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel and the YouTube video of the podcast will be up soon, hopefully. I'm, again, I'm still dealing with some technical difficulties, but it will be up soon. But if you didn't catch it yet, the podcast is up on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, anywhere that you can get a podcast, it is up. So without further ado, let's get into today's episode. So it starts off with the fact that this is the last episode of Hard Knocks. It is coming down to the wire. The season is starting. We have to cut down the roster. That is basically what is going on in this episode. It has to get cut down to a 53-man roster. And we have a lot of players that we've been following throughout this season that may or may not make the roster. We also find out that the LA Chargers have decided to start Tyrod Taylor. I think that it's going to start off this way if Justin Herbert doesn't start this season. I wouldn't be surprised if we even saw him just do a couple reps like later on in the game. Maybe if they're winning by a lot, they throw him in the game to get some experience. So I don't think that we're not going to see Justin Herbert at all this year but Tyrod will be the starting quarterback for the LA Chargers and I think that the LA Chargers have a pretty great chance. I don't know I have this gut feeling that I would trust Anthony Lynn with my whole life. Then we move on and we start coming back to some storylines that we were given in the beginning of the season and now they're kind of wrapping it up. One of them being Darius Bradwell. He came into camp and he was, I believe, 20 pounds overweight. For a football player, is not necessarily bad, but they wanted him to lose the weight because it wasn't muscle weight, it was more like quarantine weight, which I think we can all understand. It's okay, we understand. Turns out that in this past month and a half about, Darius Bradwell has lost all of the weight. He has tried to prove himself that he can do whatever it is that needs to be done. So he ended up losing the quarantine weight and getting down to the desired weight that the, the, um, the team wanted him at. Then we move on to the Rams scrimmage. They're having another scrimmage. Obviously, this is the only thing that they can do because preseason got canceled. So the Rams are having their scrimmage and a very... Um, I would say it's a moving moment, but also a little bit unsettling. They are doing these, they are trying to be socially inclined to make this whole thing that's going on with Black Lives Matter something that a lot of people will listen to. So therefore they're trying to do this whole social, the social justice for Black Lives Matter. They are doing it and they're showing that they want to make a difference and they want to make a change but a very eerie feeling comes over when they're they're trying to do this and there's nobody in the stadium that is listening to them. You are watching the game on TV with the few exceptions of a couple of teams that might start letting people into the stadiums at a very, very small capacity. Seeing it on TV makes it a lot easier to either turn it off or change the channel if you don't agree with their social justice platform. So it's a little shaky there, which is upsetting because there definitely are going to be people that are not going to watch the NFL season this year based off of social justice feelings that these, player ha these players have. But they still are doing what they need to do in order to make sure that their voices are heard as athletes, you know, with the platform that they have, they're trying to make as much of a change as possible. 
Then we're starting to follow some more rookies. So Juju Hughes is another guy that we have been following. It's the guy with the toothpick who I have not a problem with, but it makes me so nervous that this guy plays with a toothpick in his mouth because like the hazard, the hazard that is going to happen with this toothpick in his mouth. So that's like his trademark, really, it makes me so nervous. But anyway, unfortunately what happens during this scrimmage is that Juju gets hurt. He does something to his hamstring and can't play for the rest of the scrimmage, which really sucks because this was his time to show exactly what the organization needed to see in order for him to be on this 53-man roster. So he was pissed. That was what was going on with Judy Hughes. Unfortunately, he did, I believe, just pull his hamstring. It wasn't a really big injury, but it was enough to keep him sidelined for the rest of the scrimmage. Then we have Clay Johnson, who was kind of the guy I was rooting for through this whole season of Hard Knocks. I really think that he has a lot of heart and a lot of potential. I mean, we saw him make a lot of mistakes, but I think that he seems like a really great player. We see him in the scrimmage doing pretty well. Dante Dion, or Double D as they call him, with his laugh, also did very, very well. For, for a little bit of a wacky guy, <laughs> he plays really well and he plays with a lot of heart. Then we come down to Derwin James and Derwin James is this amazing safety. DJ has been hurt last year and he missed 11 games, but they were showing his highlights and oh my God, this guy plays so hard. And despite, honestly, he seems a little bit small for his position obviously in terms of size, but he plays so well and so good. And I was like, oh my God, the Chargers are going to be amazing because they have Derwin James again. He gets played in the scrimmage and it's going real great. Everybody's having a great time. And then, then we see Derwin go down and we're like, oh no, like, no, 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 no. We find out later on in the episode, spoiler alert, that he is out for the season. It really sucks because they hyped him up and they were like, yes, DJ's back, this is going to be great. I feel so bad. Two injuries in a row too, of basically ending your season. I'm sending my thoughts and prayers to you, Derwin. For real, I really want this to be okay. <laughs> Because of COVID, obviously a lot of things are changing. So because of COVID, the practice squad has been increased. God forbid anything should happen to any players. They have four extra spots on the practice squad. So instead of 12, there's now 16 spots on the practice squad for basically an emergency that just in case anything happens, they have these guys in the backup and they can trust them and they know that they are someone who can do the job if need be. Now, <laughs> you root for these guys the whole season and basically everybody gets put on the practice squad. Not one of the guys who we have been following in this entire season of Hard Knocks make it onto the actual roster, which kind of sucks because I was really looking forward to these, seeing these guys actually play. However, Again, God forbid something should happen and we do see them play, it'll be because somebody's either hurt or sick. They all make the practice squad. No man of these guys that we've been following make the 53 man roster. So a lot of the times like with this whole thing, it's just kind of official things where they basically are fired. And then the next day after they clear waivers, they're rehired. So it starts with Juju Hughes, comes in, this and that, they give him the speech, they let him go, but he's on the practice squad if they're not claimed. That's also an important part to remember. If they are not claimed by another team in that day that they are technically fired, then they'll be on the practice squad, they'll bring them back. But if they are claimed before then, then they are not because another team has claimed them. So then we see uh, Double D, Dante Dion come in and he is also let go. And what I didn't realize, which I think, I've been calling him a rookie probably this entire series of review videos. He is indeed a four-year veteran of the NFL. 
I am so sorry, Dante. <laughs> I, I don't know why I just didn't put two and two together that he was actually a player, but um, who has been in the league. And he was basically talking to the coaches about that. He was like, I'm sorry. Like, I get it. It's okay. Like, this happened to me before. Then we have Clay Johnson, who was also let go to then be brought on the practice squad. But we find out that they're a little nervous about Clay coming back because apparently the Panthers are interested in him. Now, Samantha, why would the Panthers be interested in this man? I will tell you. Basically, what happened was Clay Johnson used to play for Baylor. The new coach of the Carolina Panthers is now Matt Rule, who was the Baylor coach. And also, Clay Johnson's father is involved with the Carolina Panthers. So you would think maybe he ends up in Carolina. And that in fact does happen. And it's a little like weird because he was like, yeah, like you bring me on the practice squad, I will be on your practice squad, no problem. Ba -ba 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 -ba. That day goes by, they call Clay up and they're like, hey man, are you good? Can you come be on a practice squad? And he's like, um, no, I'm in North Carolina. <laughs> I was like, okay. Uh, I believe he is going to be on the Carolinas practice squad, though. I don't think that he makes that roster. Then we find out that Derwin James, like, like I said before, he's out for the entire season. He goes and gets surgery literally immediately. Get in there, get the surgery, and get as much time as you can to heal as possible. People were talking about, they were like, DJ already got surgery like we didn't even know that he was getting surgery they were saying that it literally was like through the night like he got surgery at like midnight or something and then texted his coaches at like five in the morning and was like all good things are great and then his coach was just like is this is this Derwin <laughs> I was like man you don't even have your players number saved come on <laughs> then we also see a little bit more of Tyrod Taylor really really working hard I mean he played with the Bills for quite some time where he did really really well then ended up in Cleveland got her Baker ended up starting and now he ends up on the Chargers where he obviously did not play last year because Philip Rivers was their starting quarterback now Tyrod finally has his chance to be a starting quarterback once again he's up early he's up before the sun he's out there lifting doing his thing I'm rooting for you Tyrod I'm rooting for you then we also then we revisit Darius Bradwell, who also makes the practice squad. And then we also end up seeing, oh my God, I forgot his first name, Fahoko, the Hawaiian guy that did the, the haka dance last week, which was really cool. So he's also on the practice squad and it kind of ends off. We find out, like I said before, Clay ends up going to Carolina. And then they basically are just starting to wrap some stuff up. They're doing their end of show kind of things and we get our last bit of bloopers at the end with our credits and that's basically the entirety of hard knocks absolutely love hard knocks so much i even have my nfl film shirt on today so i love hard knocks so much i love the way it's put together i love the content and it doesn't even matter if your team is the one that's on Hard Knocks, like every year, it's just so good. So overall, this was a really interesting season of Hard Knocks because of the fact that we did follow two teams instead of one. I thought that that was really cool. It was a little weird just because of COVID and there was no preseason games for us to see. Regardless, I think that the show did pretty well this season and um, I can't wait for football to start flipping excited for football to finally start again so tonight is chiefs texans i don't know the time i'm guessing 8 20 uh thursday night football our kickoff it's going to be great and again i apologize for these technical difficulties that i've been having this week the podcast youtube video hopefully will be up today if not I will figure it out. Thank you guys all for watching this video and you can subscribe, turn notifications, leave a comment, like the video, anything will help me and I would appreciate it so much. So thank you guys all. Don't forget to also subscribe to the podcast, uh, The Girl Who Talks Sports, and you can follow the podcast on Twitter at TGWTS Podcast. So thank you guys all for listening and happy football. Bye!